Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Hoy estamos con David Gray. David Gray is somebody who's... Hola, David. Uh, somebody hola. Who, who has come... Um, who's coming to our channel to do an interview, is an extremely interesting man. So we're going to get as much information out as we can out of David. And also David uh, speaks Spanish. So in part, we're going to talk a little bit in Spanish as well. So you can hear David um, waxing eloquent in another language as well, of which, <laughs> which I have many, I believe. Yeah, it's, Spanish is not your only language, is it? No, it's not, Gordon. I speak, uh, speak French and Spanish, and I also speak Indonesian and some local Indonesian languages as well. Wow. Wow. You've been busy then, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't, we, why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself and we'll, we'll, talk, we'll do that bit in Spanish, okay? Entonces, cuéntanos un poco de ti, David. Okay. Bueno, uh, vamos a ver. Uh, bueno, me llamo David, David Gray, como bien dijo Gordon. Nací en Irlanda del Norte hace bastantes años. <laughs> Y, uh, y fui, a, fui a la universidad, bueno, vamos a ver, um, empecé a estudiar el, el español en el colegio, en, uh, con, diez y, con 14 años empecé mis estudios de español. Y luego fui a la universidad en Inglaterra y como parte de mis estudios uh, universitarios pasé un año en Badajoz, en España, en Extremadura. Uh, el año, fue el año antes de morirse Franco, fue el 73-74, sí. Y fue un año fabuloso, fabuloso, maravilloso. ¿no? Uh, y entonces terminé la, term, volví a Inglaterra, terminé la carrera y, uh, y me metí en una organización de voluntarios eh, quienes me mandaron a Indonesia. Y viví en Indonesia 10 años. Uh, allí me casé, tuvimos una hija uh, y luego volvimos los tres a Europa. Uh, bueno, hice alguna cosa en Europa y, uh, y conseguí un trabajo en el Instituto Británico, en el British Council, en Madrid. ¿no? Sí. Y de eso hace unos más de 30 años. Uh, y llevamos ya viviendo como familia uh, unos 35 años en, en, en España. Primero en Madrid y después en un pueblo de Segovia, desde, desde donde estoy hablando ahora mismo. ¿no? Vale, qué interesante. Y, ¿Y tu experiencia en Indonesia te gustó? Sí, bueno, yo había pedido que la gente, vamos, que me mandase eh, la organización al sitio más, re, más remoto posible. ¿no? O sea, no quería nada, 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 nada muy conocido. Uh -huh. Hasta tal punto que cuando hicimos el curso de idiomas, de Indo, en el idioma indonesio, antes de ir, eh, la, la profesora... No sabía, no, no sabía dónde, el sitio donde iba yo no le sonaba de nada. <risa> y fue en Borneo, en Borneo de Este, y, y pasé allí, en ese sitio, en Borneo, dos años. Eh, años, al principio, muy difíciles. O sea, había pedido un sitio remoto, pero <risa> era un sitio bastante duro al principio. Uh -huh. um, y luego después me quedé en Indonesia y estuve otros ocho años más eh, trabajando, bueno, empecé como voluntario en, en Borneo y terminé trabajando en la industria petrolífera, fíjate la diferencia, ¿no? uh, viviendo una vida muy distinta y viajando mucho por Indonesia eh, con una moto que tenía y, uh, y muy bien, me casé, como dije antes, con una chica indonesia y, y bueno, eh, nació nuestra hija ahí, vivimos en Sumatra, en, uh, en Java, en Bali. 10 uh, años uh, muy interesantes, Gordon. Mar maravillosos, maravillosos. Me imagino, me, me lo imagino. ¿Y, ¿Y tienes la oportunidad de volver a Irlanda de vez en cuando o no? Bueno, uh, ahora mismo evidentemente no puedo salir ni salir de la provincia de Segovia. <risa> uh, sí, bueno, desgraciadamente eh, fallecieron, fallecieron mis padres hace un par de años eh, iba mucho, porque ella, era, ellos eran muy mayores, e íbamos mucho a, a verles y a cuidar un poco de ellos. Uh, y desde que falle, fallecieron eh, hemos ido mucho menos, ¿no? Uh -huh. uh, pero sí que sigo yendo. Uh, soy, originalmente soy de Belfast, uh, pero vamos a, una, a una, un pueblo, un pueblo grande. Uh, es, es curioso con, como en inglés tenemos uh, the village, la palabra village, tenemos town, 
y luego tenemos city, ¿no? Claro. Y en español es muy difícil porque town no existe ¿No? en Tan... español. Pueblo, pueblo solamente, ¿no? Pueblo, o sea, un pueblo grande. Sí. Pero sí. voy a un town en Irlanda, que es un pueblo grande, no es city, pero casi. Iba, iba allí, ¿no? Uh, uh, pero últimamente, evidentemente, como te dije al principio, eh, antes, eh, no podemos, no podemos. ¿no? Imposible salir de Segovia, imposible viajar, nada, estamos aquí. Claro. Estamos aquí, como claro. todos. Pillado, sí. Ok, uh, listen, that, that's uh, super interesting. You, you speak so well in Spanish, eh? You, know, so you can <laughs> tell you. that you've been in Spain for a long time, yeah? Well, I've been in Spain for a very long time, and as I say, I also, I mean, I started studying Spanish mm -hmm. in school, And I studied Spanish in school for four years. And then I studied French and Spanish in university. So, uh, and then I lived for a year in Badajoz, as I said, a part of my university studies. So, you know, I've had a lot, it's been a lot of years of contact with, uh, with Spanish. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I used to work for a Spanish publishing company and I, I worked in Spanish as well. So, you know, yeah, sure. a lot of years. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You've done, you put the work in, eh? it sounds like, yeah, you put the work in. So li listen, you've had this, incredible life experience you you know you've 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 seen cultures that most people haven't had the pleasure of, of being part of and so you've decided you've written a book called no means no muy sensato yeah yep tell us a little bit about that what was the inspiration behind the book what's the book about okay well the first thing i'll do gordon is i'll show you a copy of the book okay <laughs> great here it is here uh -huh. it is um Yeah, it's weird because I'm seeing it on the screen backwards. Are you seeing it backwards? No, no, I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay, so it's just right. Okay. Well, as you said, it's called No Muy Sensato, and the subtitle is Crónica de un Viaje en Borneo. Uh, and it's a book about uh, a journey which I took after I finished my, uh, my stint as a volunteer in, uh, in Borneo. I decided that, you know, I couldn't live in Borneo for two years without going into the interior mm -hmm. and seeing what the interior of Borneo was like and the people li who lived mm -hmm. there. In, in, in English, in Spain, it's funny because in Spain, when you say Borneo to people, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really ring any bells. But in English, I, I think there's a little bit more of a, an association with Borneo. Uh -huh. And we think of the wild men of Borneo. And maybe also we think of the headhunters of Borneo, the Dayak uh, peoples of the interior. So I wanted to go there. I wanted to get into the middle, into the, into the jungle, and I wanted to see, you know, the wild men, and I wanted to see the headhunters. So, um, so I left. I left the city where I'd been living, the town I'd been living, and I spent three months traveling in the interior of Borneo. I traveled by, um, by canoe and uh, on foot a lot, walking a lot, and sometimes we had to make rafts ourselves to float down rivers. And I traveled uh, between, between the longhouses. The Dayak people live in, live in uh, communal houses called longhouses. And I traveled from longhouse to longhouse, uh, sleeping very often sleeping in the forest with, uh, with local Dayak guides. And because I'd been in Indonesia for two years, um, I, 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 I spoke and still speak uh, Indonesian. But I, was able to, I was able to communicate very easily with people. And uh, it was the most, it was an incredible experience. It was an incredible experience. I mean, it was a privilege, first of all, to be able to, to live for three months in the, in the middle of, of the tropical rainforest, which, I mean, in Borneo, all of that trip rainforest, or most of it has now been destroyed by, the, uh, by oil, plant, oil palm plantations and by the coal mining companies. Yeah? Right. So most of that forest no longer exists. Yeah. But I was able to travel, as I say, for three months through, you know, untouched pretty much untouched uh, tropical rainforest which in itself is is quite an is quite an experience it's uh, it's very hard but but you have to learn how you have to learn to to to, to how to be in the rainforest uh, you can't uh, you can't fight the rainforest <laughs> sure sure <laughs> you yeah. have to you have to learn how to move you have to learn what to look look at look for Um, and after you after you learn how to be in the forest, then you start noticing wonderful things. I mean, the forest is a wonderful place. And then the Dayak longhouses. I mean, I, I arrived in places where I don't know if I was the first uh, European, and, and some of them I think I probably was. But certainly the people had virtually no contact with the outside world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I we would you know I, I would stop and 
And the first thing they always did was, you know, once they found out where I was from and, and what I wanted there, and I just said that I was basically just, you know, I just wanted to have the experience of, <laughs> of living with them. They, uh, they were very hospitable and, uh, and they had, uh, they're great. They're great. They, they would always have to throw a party. Uh, there would always be uh, some, you know, tuak, uh, which is a kind of uh, 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 alcohol made from, uh, made from Pam. And they'd be dancing, and they'd be, you know, there'd be the great, great festivities. And then after a while, people would get used to me, and then they would start. We'd start. They'd start asking me questions, and I had some of the most interesting conversations that I've ever had in my life. I had them in the interior of Borneo, you know, with people who were curious about the outside world. I mean, they used to. They, for example, um, I remember one conversation where people said to me. I mean, you have to picture the scene, right? We're sitting at night. There's no electricity, of course. You know? the, the lights are just resin lamps or oil lamps. You know? mm -hmm. And we're sitting on the, on the, on the, uh, just in front of a, a longhouse. There might be 30 or 40 people around. Yeah? Many of the women with long ears and, and you know, rings, the stretched mm -hmm. ears, the dioxide, tattooed. And, but have been wonderful people. And, and somebody asked me, they said, look, um, <clears throat> we have a question for me. They said, when it rains, they said, of course, you know, we, we live here beside our river. This is our river, the Lamaniyuk. And we know that our river runs into another river called the Laman. And we've been told that the Laman then runs into a big, big lake, which people say is called the sea. Now, our question is, why does the sea not fill up? <laughs> why, why does the sea not overflow? Right <laughs> You know, really, I mean, really interesting questions from people whose lives were in the forest, you know, who observed, yeah, and who had these, you know, I mean, they really thought about their environment, but this obviously was a question that they didn't have an answer to. Which so, is. you know, I was able to, well, I, I sort of, I kind of dug into my memory and I remembered some old geography classes and I explained a little bit about the rain cycle and, you know, the heat and, and the water and then coming into the mountains and cooling off and raining and, the, you know, but I mean, fascinating things and things like, you know, why does the sun disappear at night? And, and, and what, you know, what, what, why does the moon change? You know, why, why is sometimes, you know, all these questions that they had no answers to. Unfortunately, I was able to, to explain most of them, uh -huh. <laughs> not all of them, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but most of them. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a wonderful time. I, I, was, I went hunting with them. I, I had the privilege of being sort of taken under the wing of a, of a nomadic uh, gentleman who, that we spent, I spent about a week in the forest with him alone, and and uh, he showed me how they make blowpipes. I mean, just a, just a, a wonderful experience. Which of course, all that world has now disappeared completely, Gordon. You know, it, just, it no longer exists. I mean, all yeah. those people now have mobile phones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 yeah. The world's a different place. It's it's, it's you know. It's, it's a different place. It's better in some ways and worse than others. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. For every it, every gain, we have a loss, don't we? For every no, that's we right. Yeah. So anyway, so so friend, I had my camera with me. I was a very keen photographer. I still, I still am, and and so I, um, you know, I took I took a bunch of photographs, and uh, and friend, when I showed my friends photographs, they all said to me, "Well, hey, you look, you've got to, you know, you've got to sort of, you've got to write this up." Yeah. So I wrote this book about the journey, um, and for example, I mean, you know, I illustrated it with photographs you know, like like okay. like this one here yeah? uh -huh. so there are like you know 16 or i don't know 16 or so photographs in the in the book of people whom i met and and moments that i lived you know this is another old dayak gentleman there wow. um uh but yeah i mean the book is um yeah i mean the book's written in spanish <laughs> yeah so it's all in spanish yeah and you're spanish. saying it's only is it only available from a spanish publisher is that right no, I I, I self-published the book. Um, I, I wanted to I wanted to have the experience of of doing the whole thing myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I published it myself, and uh, it's I mean there's a website uh, three uh, tres tres uh -huh. punto com, uh, sorry punto s uh -huh. punto es, and um, yeah I mean the the website uh, gives you gives you all the information. Okay. But it's um, and you you can buy the book also on on the website if if you're if if some perhaps some people who are watching are, are perhaps you know more advanced uh, learners, they might be interested in in um, in a little bit of uh, a curiosity. Sure, yeah. <laughs> a, book, a book about Borneo written by an Irish man in Spanish. <laughs> in Spanish, I know you couldn't get you couldn't get more diverse. What what I shall do is I in the in the information on this video I'll put the links. Okay. 
if anybody's interested in, in getting a hold of the, the book as well. And I'll also put an attached, uh, an email that they can contact you as well. Yeah, because that's great. Um, yeah. So people who perhaps outside of Spain who might want to try and get a get a copy. Yeah. OK. Um, right. Questions for you then, because obviously, well, I mean, we could talk for hours, hours on this subject. But <laughs> right, you, you've you've experienced um, Spanish culture. You've experienced Irish culture, Northern Ireland. Um, and also Indonesian culture. What would, I, I know I'm probably throwing this, this is a difficult question, but if you were looking at the three cultures, what would you say were the biggest differences to you between the three cultures that, you know, that you've seen? Well, no, I mean, that is a, that's a pretty big question. Hey, can, can, I, can I turn that question around and uh -huh. say maybe what a, a striking similarity Okay, yes, yeah, between, similarities, between yeah. two of them, yeah. Uh -huh. And this is very interesting because my wife, as I said, is, is Indonesian, right? Now, she has lived, we both have lived here in Spain for almost 35 years. And when she came here, she didn't speak a word of Spanish, uh -huh. yeah? Um, so she, and she came here with a young baby, you know, of, of a year old. And she really had to, she had to, you know, she had to, she had to manage because I was working quite hard at the time. She had to manage on her own. And she is, she is, she has made um, a fantastic group of friends and she's actually very, very, you know, well liked and very much appreciated by, by the Spanish people whom we know, you know, our, our Spanish circle and then people here in Segovia generally. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. very, very well, well liked. And one of the reasons for that, and it's interesting, I think, and this is where it's a little bit different, say, to Britain or, or, or Northern Ireland. One of the reasons for that is the importance of the family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is something which I'm sure you've seen living in Spain yourself, Gordon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's different in the United Kingdom. Yeah, the role of the family is different. I mean, it's not that we don't you know have families. We do obviously, and we love our parents and all the rest, and our brothers and sisters. But it's different. Yeah. And the role of the family in Spain is very similar to the role of the family, the importance of the family in Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the family is a big unit. People see each other quite a lot. They have these big get togethers. You know, I mean, sometimes they end up, you know, some of these get togethers don't always end very happily. <laughs> you know, there's all these jokes in Spanish about about your the brother in law at Christmas time, right? <laughs> yeah. Because of course in here in Spain, people have they get together, they have like this marathon, right? They have this Christmas Eve meet get family get together, Christmas Day. Uh, then they have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Then they have Reyes. <laughs> you know, Reyes. Like it never ends. Christmas goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, really, it never ends. Yeah, but you see, perhaps a little bit too much of your family <laughs> during that. But anyway, no, I mean, there's, I mean, there are all sorts of jokes about that. <clears throat> but um, now, joking aside, I mean, the role of the family is one thing which I would I would say is, you know, Spanish culture and Span and and Indonesian culture in in some ways couldn't be more different. Yeah, I mean, incredibly different, you know. I mean, one of the things which my wife said when she first arrived here, she said, why are people shouting at each other all the time? You know, why are they so angry? But of course, we all, you know, we know <laughs> Spaniards, you know, Spaniards just, you know, are very direct and they speak very, they speak quite loudly. And of course, then it's, yeah. it's this situation in the Spanish bar where, where, you know, because people are speaking loudly, you have to speak loudly as well. And the noise level goes up and the place is pandemonium right it's a sort of a, a shout fest <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely with two televisions blaring at the same with time with two televisions and the and the uh the what do you call it the um the slot machine you know, <laughs> jangling do, do, in the do, corner do, 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 do. <laughs> that's right absolutely <laughs> but yeah. anyway um but i mean those are yeah i mean those are yeah i mean those are but that's one of the big differences certainly that, that i would say between british culture and uh and Spanish culture and, and Indonesian culture, and at the same time, the similarities. It, it, okay. It, the, fact, the role of family. Yeah. What about this then? What about this? What if you had to choose one dish of food from each country, from Indonesia, from, from Spain, <laughs> and from uh, Northern Ireland? What would it be? Well, do I have to choose one from Northern Ireland? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I want to know, what, what do you eat there? <laughs> <laughs> what do we eat there? Well, let me think. Uh, <laughs> curry? No. Um, well, from from Spain, man. I mean, Segovia. I mean, my Segovian friends would kill me if I didn't say Gorgia roast eating. lamb. Yeah, oh, it's lamb. Oh, it's <laughs> prepared lamb. in the Segovian style. You oh, know, just okay. in a in a wood oven with it's uh, it's a it's a big leg of lamb, uh, just with in a, in a in a clay 
extra dish uh-huh. just with salt and water is how they do it you know with nothing okay. else no spices or anything maybe a little bit of rosemary um so yeah i mean there's so many so many delicious uh dishes in spain yeah i'd have to say living in segovia i have to say roast lamb okay, okay. <laughs> with I thought, salad I thought you were going wine. To- I thought you were going to say cochinillo because they're also famed for the for the. You know, when I went there, there were lots and lots of little piglets in the window with the legs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. No, that, that that it is actually I mean, roast lamb. You do get uh, obviously in, in lots of other part, parts of Spain, but yeah, cochinillo maybe is more hardcore Segovian. Yeah? Right. But right. Uh, it was actually invented by. Well, they say it was invented by the famous Candido, who was a, a owner of a restaurant right beside the aqueduct. Uh-huh. The aqueduct is is Segovia's. You know big you know, I, well one of two or three big eye-catching monuments yeah. that's right yeah. i mean I, um so yeah so so no i wasn't going to say i wasn't going to say and i certainly wasn't going to say paella i mean I, I like paella but it's, it's a bit of a cliche right <laughs> isn't it just yeah and from indonesia uh from indonesia uh oh man there's so much i mean there's a there again i mean indonesian food is absolutely wonderful and i mean indonesia Indonesia is there are thirteen thousand islands in Indonesia. Wow. Yeah? Okay, lots of them are very small, but but there are um, and two hundred fifty million people or two hundred forty million people. I mean, Indonesia is is many many different cultures and many many different languages and different mm. cuisines. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm very fond of a, a style of cuisine in in West Sumatra called Padang, and you find Padang restaurants all over Indonesia. And uh, and they have a particular kind of sort of heavily curried beef, which uh, which I'm a great uh, <laughs> I'm a great lover of. I realise that both these dishes I've mentioned so far are meat dishes. I'm not a particularly big meat eater, <laughs> but uh, I mean I like fish and vegetables as well. But um, sure. but yeah, and then in, in Northern Ireland, well, there you really have me. I mean, oh dear, oh dear, what 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 can I say? <laughs> I, do, you, do you have a famous breakfast, you know, a holiday breakfast that you would have? Oh yeah, well, the, the Ulster, yeah, the famous Ulster fry. Okay. Yeah, and no, I think yeah, I think that would probably yeah, that would probably that that normally visitors to Northern Ireland are normally much taken aback whenever they're presented with an Ulster fry. Of course, very few people actually make an Ulster fry in their houses. It's you know typical sort of thing. But if you go out to a cafe or something, you know, you can almost always order an Ulster fry. An Ulster fry is. It's well. It's it's uh, it's well. It's, it's classic sort of bacon, eggs, tomatoes, sausages, beans. But it also has potato bread, yeah, oh, okay. and uh, and and um, soda bread, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. which is you know two, two sort of local varieties that are not common if if you can get them at all in England actually. But they're they're you certainly they're all over uh, Northern Ireland certainly. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and it, it is, it's a huge plate of food. And if you're putting, trying to get it down you at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning or something, it's a, it's a challenge. Absolutely. It reminds <laughs> with a cup me, of tea, of course. Uh, absolutely. Always with a cup of tea. Always it reminds me of, um, of the breakfast in Scotland as well, because my, my friend from Glasgow, he used to, uh, their breakfast was like you've described with uh, what they call a totty scone, which is potato. Potato bread. Potato bread. Yeah. yeah. They call it totty scone. But not soda bread. But between that and the the um, the sausage square, that I used to have acid all day. <laughs> it was the most horrific, horrific thing to stuff in your face first thing in the morning. Well, talking of horrific things, um, something I have never tried, but is famous in Scotland. I don't know if you've tried it or not. Is the deep fried Mars bar? We were just talking about that last night, and I said to Cynthia, "I will do you one." Yeah, yeah, it's famed, and 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 apparently not that bad. <laughs> not that bad, maybe. Well, I hate to think what it does for your for your uh, cholesterol, and you know. <laughs> I've never had very... one. <laughs> uh, but we were talking about it because in Scotland, it, um, in the, the fish and chip shops, which are you know famous up there as well, like everything just goes in the fat. If you want a pizza in yeah. the fat. You know, it's not. I'm sure it's not particularly great food, but once in a while, I suppose. You know, <laughs> a battered Mars bar. Um, do you mean? Anyway, so we're, every, we're, all the audience are going to be hungry now, David. Will have? <laughs> I'm getting hungry myself. <laughs> okay, so let's let's leave it there. Um, it's that's been fascinating. I'm sure you've. I'm sure you've got stories. Well, obviously, you don't want to tell all the stories out of your book, but I'm <laughs> sure you've got stories for for a lifetime to tell. Um, I will put all the information in the in the video for people who, who are interested in maybe having a look at the book, you know, um, and maybe another time we can have another another chat. You can let us know how it's going and, and 
a few more. Uh, I'd, I'd love, I'd love to, Gordon, uh, and maybe we could talk a little bit about learning Spanish and and you know, That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The process of learning some tips, maybe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but you yeah. know, you've learned a lot of languages, so you, you know, intrinsically, you know how to learn a language, and it's just a matter of, of working out how to advise other people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think there are some little tips that um, that you can give people, which 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 might which help, you know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, we'll leave that one for the next uh, the okay. next time that we talk. That's been brilliant. Great. Ok, right. then. So, entonces, muchísimas gracias, David, y nos vemos la próxima vez, ¿no? Nos vemos, Gordon. Adiós. Muy buenas tardes. Muy buenas tardes. <laughs>